Okay, so you understand that uh, you've been charged with, now you understand that you've been charged with two counts of first degree murder? Yes, I okay. understand what you're saying. And, and, and the, the charges are for murder in regards to both of your children. Okay. Hi, Serena. It's August 8th, 2006. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Serena. Happy birthday to you. Serena's three today. Yay! What do you think, Sophia? Are you sing happy birthday? No? I'm three. You're three today. Yay! Shall we go to the living room and see if you've got any birthday presents from the birthday fairies? Yes! Okay, let's go. I got a present! <gasps> what is it? What are you watching you? Sleeping beauty. Sleeping beauty. Uh huh. How does mama mama does mama love you? This much. Oh, I love you more than that. How much does your mama love you? What are the things? And I understand here that you've gone through a lot in your life here. And uh, it doesn't sound, it sounds like to me your whole world came crashing down. And it doesn't sound like you've got a lot of support. And you know what, truly, I, I don't understand how anyone in your situation could be able to do that on your own. I, I really don't. Only you know what was going on inside yourself. On the afternoon of October 4th in 2006, in the city of Barrie, Ontario, Canada, Elaine Campione, a longtime resident of Gasparo Forks, New Brunswick, whom decided to make the move to Ontario in the year 2000, has now found herself at the Ontario Provincial Police Station under arrest for the murders of her two children, three-year-old Serena and 19-month-old Sophia Campione. And when this they happened, were my babies. they're your babies, I know. Serena was playing in the in the living room, coloring, sign, doing sign language. Mm -hmm. Sophia was having a bath. We were videotaping. Mm -hmm. Everything was fine. Listening to music. Same as we always do. Mm -hmm. it's, nothing's different. They go to bed between 7 and 8 o'clock at night, every night. Mm -hmm. I kept them in a routine to keep them stable. Because of the chaoticness of having to have a babysitter in a day or babysitter at night because he's dragging me into court for this and that. Meanwhile, my daughters are bawling their eyes out because they don't want me to be away from them. I know you love them. I, I can tell that. I can see that in your eyes. On the, I don't know, but I'm trying to understand what happened last night. And only you can tell me that. I don't understand. I don't understand if I don't. And the next thing I know is I got people at my house. Mm -hmm. A guy with a blue outfit with orange on it in my bedroom. Uh, there's a police officer telling me something about charges. I'm asking where my daughters are. In the months leading up to this interrogation, Elaine found herself struggling with her own personal mental health after enduring several years of physical, psychological, and emotional abuse at the hands of her husband, Leo Campion. Elaine slowly fell deeper and deeper into some sort of a psychotic state. Leo's parents, some neighbors of Elaine, and even Elaine's mom, Faye, began to notice that Elaine's mental health appeared to be declining. Despite noticing something was very off, nobody could predict the genuine extent of Elaine's internal struggle. 
And they're just looking at me, telling me I they need to put handcuffs on me. I need to get on a stretcher, and I'm still asking them where my my daughters are. Mm -hmm. And that's all. Do you remember making the call? It was a phone call you made this morning. No. It's, but then the next thing I know is there's people at my door. Okay. Fine, and I'm just going to back up. So what happened last night? Sophie was having a bath. I was videotaping her for my mother singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star because that's her favorite song. Mm -hmm. She sings it every night for my mom. Right. And I was doing that and she would start to do bath flutes and she got a little bit of water in her ear. So I stopped the videotape because she panicked and then I picked her up and then that was it. Then I went over to see Serena because she was coloring, asking her to clean up her coloring. She's got to get ready for bed, pick up her pajamas. Mm -hmm. And that's all. And the next thing I remember is these people are in my house. Okay. You talked about they, they were in the baths. Sophia, Sophia was in the bath. Sophia was in the bath. What herself. about Serena? Did you ever put Serena in the bathtub? Serena is always in the bathtub with Serena, but she wasn't in the bathtub with Sophia. She was busy coloring and cleaning up her mess and picking out pajamas. Mm -hmm. And then why were you videotaping? To send to my mother, okay. her singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Okay. And had you done any of this videotaping prior to last night? There's just videotapes, little bits of here and there. There should be birthday okay. tapes. There should be other tapes of the two of them in a tub together. There should be there's lots of different kinds of little bits of, bits of tapes mm -hmm. on the video camera. Okay. At what point did you put the videotape away? After I went to go give Serena her bath. And she was saying she was going to get ready for bath. I put the video camera in the living room. Okay. All right. Now with all this pressure balling up, and you were making a videotape, for your mother. Any point? Did you do anything in the, the in the bathroom? I remember we sing songs. We usually sing ABCs. We usually sing the five little duckies. Mm -hmm. It's like it's the usual routine that we always take. Okay. That's all I remember. So I sing the same song. They sing, you know, joy, joy to the world, you know, all the songs that they love. Mm -hmm. It's the same songs they sing over and over and over again. And where do you, where do you think your children are now? I assume my husband had them. Hope you understand you've been charged with murder. Hope you understand that both the children, Sophia and Serena, are both deceased. On October 2nd, 2006, in the midst of a psychotic episode, Elaine Campion made a decision to attempt to end her own life. In doing so, she also made a decision to drown both Serena and Sophia in the bathtub. I painted the 
cords to let me go home where I could be protected by my families. I went through lawyers fighting his last lawyer, even with all the papers I showed, telling her, look, you know, he's lying. There's nothing wrong with me mentally. There isn't. I'm scared of you. I'm scared of everything, of your family. Everything you've told me over the years is the truth. And I'm just going to God, because God is the only one who cares and he can protect me. Because you are the devil, Leo. You are the psychotic devil. And he should have stayed away from you the first time you beat me when I was, first met you when I was, what, 21, 22? I should have ran away from you far then. At least the girls and I will be together in heaven, protected and safe from you. And you can't hurt us, you can't torture us, you can't bother me anymore. You can't sit there and control me. You have me locked into a county where I have no friends, no family. You got it so I couldn't even go see my own parents. Throughout the past years in this relationship, Leo was charged with four counts of assault, one count of bodily harm, and a death threat towards Elaine. Elaine also reported to the police that Leo assaulted their daughter Serena, in which resulted in swelling and bleeding. Leo was charged with this offense, but was later released from jail on a bond of $10,000. After being released, Leo was not happy. Leo immediately went to tell Elaine that if she wanted to make things work, she could no longer speak to her mother or arrange visits of any sort. This treatment escalated over the years, and the seclusion increased as well, until eventually Elaine showed up at a woman's shelter where she displayed a black eye and extreme bruising on multiple body parts. This was the final straw for Elaine, so she immediately filed for divorce. In the affidavit, she filed, It is in the best interest of the children that they remain in my care. Once her custody request was denied, the feeling of seclusion escalated at the point of Elaine feeling as if she was completely trapped in Ontario, away from her family and her friends, all thanks to an extremely abusive man. person can tell us what happened last night. Mm -hmm. How did they die? I'm not allowed to speak without an attorney present. Mm -hmm. That's why I have to say I cannot speak without an attorney present. Did you kill both of them? I cannot speak without do the autopsy, what are we going to find? Are we going to find water in the lungs? I'm not allowed to answer anything without an attorney. Okay. And I, I can understand. You know, one of the things that uh, I, I wanted to make sure is that they were, they did die peacefully. 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 Yeah, I appreciate you telling me that because I that makes me feel good as a parent and as a person too that you know here we've been talking for a little while here and I you know when I leave this room I want to be able to say that you're not this monster and that it was all this that was on your shoulders and it's it's my job to go out and explain my children have no idea 
and if the day comes, I don't even know what I will say to them when I see them again. Mm -hmm. Because they knew nothing. They knew nothing. They trusted me more than they knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Do they trust that what you're doing was the right thing? I don't know if they can answer. Yeah. How do you feel? Do you feel you're doing the right thing? I would have liked to take them somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. Now I have to answer to God. Now you do, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a tough thing. I mean, I don't know what would be worse as the parent, because you here, here you are now, and your babies aren't with you. They were easy pregnancies. I had two C-sections. Mm -hmm. Savannah almost died. Mm -hmm. Sophia almost died the first month she was born. She had a fight for her life. Mm -hmm. And they were strong little girls. Mm -hmm. And I raised them to be strong little girls. Okay, so do you understand everything that's happened here today? I mean, you, you, were, you understand that Yes, I'm being charged. Yeah, and, and and you understand it's two counts of first degree murder for both your children. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Elaine was immediately taken to a cell following this interrogation, and was held until later facing trial for the murders of her daughters. It was learned during trial that Elaine had convinced both Serena and Sophia they were going to play an underwater bubble blowing game. When the girls went underwater to blow bubbles, Elaine held both of their heads underwater until they passed away. Water was found in their lungs, bruises, and some sort of blue substance was found on the foreheads of both little girls. The blue substance was later confirmed to have been from a blue bath mat that was located on the bathtub floor. Elaine Campione was found guilty of two counts of first degree murder and was sentenced to 25 years with no possibility of parole. However, since Elaine's incarceration, prison staff have reported that Elaine has been an active part of the internal community and has been showing extensive progress over the years behind bars. In 2019, the Parole Board of Canada agreed to allow Elaine escorted and supervised leaves. She has since taken part in several anger management courses and psychiatric treatment. Elaine also has been attending church once a month, as well as recovery and healthy relationship programs. All of Elaine's prison leaves were said to have taken place outside of Barrie, Ontario. Elaine has served approximately 15 years of her sentence and is now considered a minimum security offender.